All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of System Shock Radio. I, as always, am your host, Nigel, and uh, first things first, before we get into today's episode, I'm just going to wait for some people to trickle in. I just want to say thank you all so much to uh, those who have been tuning in to System Shock Radio. Uh, We are having our uh, special guests and everything, and um, I'm glad a lot of you guys... Uh, we're around to enjoy the um uh, unfortunately I'm probably not gonna uh, have a guest for a little bit at least not until the uh new year starts back up again but um it's just gonna be me for now I am gonna have my uh, sister for the uh, Christmas Eve episode uh more on that later but uh just thank you all so much for your support those who are following the uh system shock radio Instagram page and those of you who have uh, subscribed to my uh, YouTube channel who uh, thank you guys so much, and, uh, remember those pages are up so that you can see past, uh, episodes of System Shock Radio as well as, um, I'll also archive some Phoenix Rising Radio episodes and possibly, uh, do some other stuff on there as well pertaining to, uh, not just System Shock Radio, but myself as well. So, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance already, go check those out. And I will actually link those in the comments of this video after we wrap up. But today, uh, you'd think we'd be here on a bit of a lighter mood. But uh, nope, today we're going to be talking about the WWF, um, aka Vince McMahon, steroid trial from uh, the 80s and 90s. And uh, sorry for um, being so late. I was supposed to go live at 1.30 today, but... Uh, uh, I had to move it, it later on, just to um, have some have a bit more time to uh, prepare. And uh, what I actually found was a pretty big wealth of knowledge pertaining to this. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So, steroids always been a pretty big, um, a pretty big problem when it comes to sports. They're illegal in in pretty much all sports, and were really, really frowned upon at the time, hey, uh, Devon, good to see you, um, they were frowned upon, and are still frowned upon, on because it's seen as enhanced, or, or seen as getting an unfair advantage, so, uh, reasonably, there'd be a lot of controversy behind it and without any further ado let's get right into it so what was the trial and it's funny that we're talking about this well I mean it's not funny but it's kind of funny that we're talking about this because today is an event uh hosted by wwe of course they're no longer wwf anymore now they're wwe and that is survivor series and represent wwe gear my undisputed era t-shirt or just, and something else I didn't play, and they just returned to NXT on Wednesday. So, a lot of stuff I'm lining, but that's how I know that I have to talk about this. And the reason I wanted to is because I feel that this is super interesting and informative. So, uh, without any further ado, who I, I don't know how long this is going to take. Now, with System Shock Radio episodes, I usually try not to go more than 30 minutes. So, if this video exceeds the 30 minute uh, time limit, then what I will do is have a uh, part two for tomorrow. But without any further ado, let's get right into it. And we're gonna start off with, uh, I'm just reading off my notes here, here, and I put down that in 1994, Vince McMahon and Titan Sports Incorporated, the distributors, of WWF at the time faced three counts of steroid related charges and Vince McMahon was accused of routinely obtaining steroids to give to his employees slash competitors and I have a few sources that I uh, link to and I will link those articles in the uh, comment section so uh, the first is Sports Kita then uh, Babyface versus Heel dot Substack dot com then uh, WWF Old School, oh, it's a website, and then New York Times, and finally Fight News Now. So uh, we're going to get right into it, and some of these do overlap, and I'll be reading off some quotes from different websites, but um, uh, yeah, so three counts 
of steroid related charges and uh there were t and out of the three counts two counts were for steroid distribution itself and the third was conspiracy to distribute steroids and a quote from Sportskeeda on the matter, it says, In 1994, Vince McMahon and Titan Sports, Inc. faced three counts of steroid-related charges at the United States Federal Courthouse of the Eastern District of New York. McMahon was accused of routinely obtaining anabolic steroids to distribute to his competitors and employees at the time. Hogan was competing with the World Championship Wrestling, WCW, and, of course, Hogan, they were referring to Hulk Hogan, and uh, it says he was competing with the World Championship Wrestling brand and was no longer with WWE, but was the focal point of the case along with Mr. Along with uh, McMahon, I should say. And of course, Hulk Hogan, one of uh, WWF's biggest stars of that time, and uh, was found to, of course, be using steroids. And that was kind of the thing is that uh, you have these like muscly guys like Hogan and others, as we'll see, it's like these guys definitely have to be taking steroids and they weren't wrong. But um, moving on, it says that I've also put down that Dr. George Zahorian the third, I believe, was a ringside physician who was said to supply steroids to wrestlers such as Hulk Hogan, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and the Ultimate Warrior. But due to lack of evidence and Kevin Wacoles, known in WWF as Nails, and if I pronounce any of these names wrong, I do apologize, uh, being a character witness, only one of the counts against Vince McMahon wound up in court, which McMahon was acquitted for. And a quote from Sports Gear says, the, This illegal distribution was seized when federal prosecutor Theodore Smith began investigating Dr. Zahorian. He was caught selling drugs to William Dunn, who was an informant cooperating with the investigators. Zahorian was indicted in 1991 and caught in his office attempting to shred documentation. Also, despite being in hot water, W executives Linda McMahon and Pat Patterson still allowed Zahorian to continue being affiliated with the company. So, uh, here you got a guy distributing, uh, steroids, Dr. Zahorian, and the next article I'm going to be referencing kind of goes in more detail, but definitely not a good look being affiliated with this guy, hey, and, uh, in a lot of people's eyes, I could make them look guilty, You're just saying, um, how much time we have, and I think I'm okay, and we're going to move on. To more information, this one from Babyface versus Heel Substack, and the title of the article was "The Boys Want Their Candies," which was a quote, and we'll continue, and we'll see why in a moment. But it says that Dr. George Zahorian was seen as a friend and confidant for wrestlers as he sold them steroids and other types of painkillers, such as opioids, of course. Uh, in the world of professional wrestling, even though it is scripted, it's it's oftentimes not real. Sometimes it gets real, and sometimes. Uh, wrestlers, of course, get hurt. They get injured. Injuries happen within the world of sports. And so, uh, they felt, and so a lot of wrestlers may have felt that painkillers and other types of steroids would help, uh, heal them and allow them to keep going, as we'll see later on in this. Tony, big bro, good to see you. Um... Uh, continuing on, it says that Dr. Zahorian was hired by both Titan Sports and the Pennsylvania State Athletics Commission as ringside physician. Of course, like I said, wrestlers get hurt, so uh, you need a ringside physician to uh, check on them and make sure they're okay and everything. And uh, continuing on, Anita Scales, who was the uh, director. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Here. Anita Scales, who was the director of compliance and regulations for Titan Sports, was in charge of hiring ringside doctors after the policy was amended in 1989. What policy? Well, this policy. Uh, yes, yeah, this one. This one for years with WF Constantly Pennsylvania. 
uh, there are plenty of opportunities for the wrestlers to get back to get their draws. This is not the policy. My apologies, but uh, this is talking about Dr. Zahorian. This went on for years, and with WWF constantly in Pennsylvania, there were plenty of opportunities for the wrestlers to get their drugs. Through June 1984, the companies would do back-to-back -back television tapings in Allentown and, and Hamburg every three weeks. So Dr. Zahorian was a native of Hershey, Pennsylvania. And so uh, oftentimes when they were in Pennsylvania, the wrestlers would uh, get their uh, drugs and steroids from him, allegedly, and I want to go into the policy. Oh, yeah, here it is. And this whole arrangement, though, and this is a, the quote from Babyface versus Heel dot Substack. The, this whole arrangement, though, was upended by 1989's Professional Wrestling Act, requiring wrestling promoters to hire the ringside doctors themselves. So uh, they couldn't just bring in doctors willy-nilly. They actually had to uh, go out and hire them. And that, I feel like, is where... And that actually is where things start to get interesting. So, uh, I took down that Dr. Zahorian and his heroes were in seemingly high demand with a lot of the wrestlers going to uh, visit him and everything. So, he wanted to be ringside physician, even going above scales to Pat Patterson and to Luke Scarpa, a.k.a. Chief J. Strongbow. So, uh, Pat Patterson and Chief J. Strongbow were former uh, professional wrestlers from WWF, of course, some of the, uh, a couple of the biggest ones, in fact, Pat Patterson was the first Intercontinental Champion, if I'm not mistaken, and, uh, Scales didn't want to hire, uh, Zahorian, given his, uh, shady pass of steroid distribution, but, uh, Patterson and Strongbow wanted him in, so what did she do? She, uh, Scale sought help from Robert Morella, aka Gorilla Monsoon, and Tony Garia, which was a uh, roadside agent, when dealing with Dr. Zahorian, although apparently they weren't much help, and I believe I do have a quote from there. And yes, uh, it says Scales consulted with two people on the wrestling side who she felt would give her a reasonable assessment of the situation, Gorilla Monsoon and road agent Tony Garia. Uh, and again, if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, I do apologize. Both she, both, she said, were anti-Zahorian, classifying him as sleazy with Monsoon, adding that there was no room in the business for people like that. Gorilla also didn't give her any real advice. Uh, he pretty much said that she was in between a rock and a hard and another quote saying, oh, that I took down saying, having realized that there was a powerlessness, she went to see her direct supervisor, Linda McMahon, of course, the uh, wife of Vince McMahon. And uh, 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 Nia Scales was quoted saying, I explained to her I was receiving pressure from within the company to assign Dr. Zahorian to Hershey. He, she said, and I had believed with the law change that it was my responsibility to make the choice, and we had carefully researched physicians in Pennsylvania, and this should be my choice. I was being that to assign Dr. Zahorian. I said, Pat, Pat wants him assigned, and I heard scurrilous things, and I don't want him here. And uh, she, aka Linda McMahon, said, you do what Pat says, and that's what Scales did. Uh, Zahorian was uh, brought in. And, and uh, basically, he has to put down Limit Man, told Scales to follow Pat Patterson's orders and assign Dr. Zahorian as ringside physician, which would come back to haunt them when he was, of course, uh, indicted in 1991. And uh, I put down that Vince McMahon's charges were two counts of steroid distribution and one count of conspiracy to distribute steroids. If found guilty, McMahon would have been sentenced to 11 years in prison and fined 1.5 million dollars. Good God, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot of money, but that that just shows how much of a serious thing this is, and just how important it is. And so, uh, I put down that Dr. Zahorian was in trouble for steroid distribution in 1991, with Titan Sports seemingly doing nothing and keeping him employed, which of course looks bad for those involved. If you're keeping this guy on your payroll, or who is in trouble for this stuff, it's gonna be a bad look for you. It's sort of why, in the other cases, is, is such as the uh, Bill Cosby case or the R. Kelly case. A lot of the stuff that Bill Cosby did was taken off the air because they didn't want to be affiliated with them. And while 
Oh, some would make the argument that uh, steroids are not as serious as sexual assault. Oh, this is still a pretty bad look if someone with this much uh, notoriety and notoriousness behind him is still there, still on your payroll, etc. And uh, Sean O'Shea, who was the prosecutor against WWF, described Anita Scales' experience with being forced to hire Dr. Zahorian as ringside physician, and she was unaware of his steroid distribution. He used her experience in Titan Sports' refusal to fire Zahorian against Titan Sports and the WWF, and Dr. Zahorian also testified and said that of his steroid distribution, 98 to 99% of his customers were WWF wrestlers. However, Pat Patterson and Arnold Scotland, another former wrestler, uh, wanted Dr. Zahorian as ringside physician. Many, uh, Since many of the wrestlers wanted him, he was uh, very popular. And that was the quote that uh, Pat Patterson uh, told to Scales. Well, as to why uh, she should keep Dr. Zahorian around is because, uh, as he quoted in the previous article, this is more so from the WWF Old School article, but as quoted it by Patterson, the boys want their candy because they wanted those uh, steroids. And so um, Patterson felt he needed to keep them around. And uh, this is where things get interesting because... Hulk Hogan, one of the biggest WWE stars that we mentioned earlier, and a man who was uh, take, taking steroids, uh, was brought in. Now, at this point, Hogan had jumped ship to WCW. And how crazy is it that in the midst of all of this, Hogan jumping ship to WCW who was still relatively fresh, and in hindsight, Hogan jumping to WCW was such a huge move. Now it was also a bit of a detrimental move, but that's a topic for another time. But Terry Bollea, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan, this is reading again from my notes, testified that he took steroids and had a prescription for them, and McMahon didn't force him to take steroids. He also said steroid use was fairly common among WWF, I should say, wrestlers, and uh, that is very much true. In fact, it, uh, drug use among WWF wrestlers was very common, and so to the point where her at one point, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Iron Sheik were arrested for being, after they were pulled over and it was discovered they had drugs, and uh, not only that, but the fact that they were supposed to be enemies on TV, but um, were in the car together got them in trouble, but uh, having drugs got them in even more trouble with management, and so uh, it's a very, very big deal, I feel. I feel like, and many people, I'm sure, feel like. But uh, ultimately, in 1994, due to lack of jurisdiction and testimonies, Vince McMahon was found not guilty. So, uh, with such big implications for this and a hefty fine and uh, all the jail time that McMahon could have faced, this very well could have been a trial that brought down the company. And uh, it would have been a huge blemish if McMahon was found guilty, but thankfully, he was found not, and he was very uh, celebratory. He, now, let's uh, make the quantum leap to modern-day WWE. So, WWE nowadays is a lot stricter when it comes to their, um, when it comes to, like, uh, drug use and stuff, and I put down that in modern-day WWE, they're strict about different types of drug use through their wellness policy in the wake of many, if incidents involving drug use and injuries in the WWF slash WWE. So, drug use is still a very prevalent thing in professional wrestling, but it seems that WWE is cracking down more on it, and this could be a, for a variety of things, things, not only just the steroid trial, but also the deaths of Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, the very uh, tragic death of Chris Benoit that WWE will not mention due to the horror and everything behind it, and all that entailed, and it's uh, such a big thing that WWE completely distanced themselves from Benoit, which is unfortunate because Benoit was a phenomenal wrestler, but uh, WWE wants to keep their talent safer, and that's why uh, the wellness policy is in place pretty much if WWE catches you using a drug, 
that is not on their list. If you go to uh, WWE's like corporate, you'll find a list of the drugs that they allow. Oh, if it's not if you don't have a proper prescription for it and they catch you, they will suspend you first for 30 days. Is that's your first strike, and then a uh, second suspension for 60 days, and then the third suspension and they uh, fire you. It's immediate uh, termination. And many of the wrestlers have been caught up in that. So wrestlers such as uh, Jeff Hardy is a notable one, and uh, Rey Mysterio at one point, and uh, even Randy Orton got caught. And at one point in 2007, I believe, there was a article naming a bunch of wrestlers that were caught up. Wrestlers like Edge and uh, Mr. Kennedy, he all caught in that article and uh because they don't want another situation of eddie guerrero and chris benoit eddie guerrero of course died very young from a heart attack in uh 2005 in fact the anniversary of his death was just a few days ago and chris benoit uh uh you know what i will likely talk about uh chris benoit at some other point on this uh podcast but uh all, all of that that is likely why WWE is dissing themselves from that and this trial as well because they were nearly in hot water and uh, the opposing side against WWE felt that uh, WWE was going to be found guilty but many believed that they would be found not guilty and sure enough they were uh, found not guilty but I believe that that was too close of a call for them which is why they've cracked down so much. But, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. So, uh, I will link uh, everything in the uh, comment section below. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And um, go follow us on Instagram and on YouTube, all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.